Hey y'all, welcome to Humming Catfish. Today we're gonna be canning deer meat. So get your jars, put on your apron, and let's go. Got about 18 pounds of deer meat cut into about one inch cubes. We're gonna be using the raw pack method. That's where we're just gonna take the raw meat, put it into our jars. I'm gonna add salt and a little bit of garlic. Now since this is a low acid food, we're gonna be pressure canning it. So let me introduce you to Big Bertha. Bertha is large and in charge. And when her little weight starts to jiggling, well, all the boys come running. <laughs> I got quart jars. I'm gonna fill them with the venison, leaving about an inch head space. And I'm really gonna pack that meat in there so there's not a whole lot of, lot of air. If you use a, one of these little flat sticky things, as you push down, Now don't overfill these, um, even if like this I have a little bit left, uh, you do not want to go over the one inch head space because it needs that to be able to expand and vent and if you fill it up more than that you're going to have, uh, I forget what it's called, but basically where it starts coming out into your pressure canner. I think I know who's going to get the rest of this. All right, this is optional. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of canning salt to each of the jars. If you don't have canning salt, uh, just make sure it's non-iodized. Otherwise it gets the water all cloudy and I don't, just does weird stuff. And since we live in humid Alabama, I usually keep my salt in a little bag. <laughs> so just sprinkle that on the top. And I'm going to do this for each one. Now I'm going to do a teaspoon of garlic in each one. I have the powdered garlic. I got a little lazy on this and uh, just got, got some from Walmart. So I'm going to add one teaspoon. Now I'm going to do a half teaspoon of black pepper. Now I'm gonna wipe the rims. I have my diluted vinegar. I'm gonna do each jar twice. Uh, I'm not using the reusable lids this time I'm not quite confident with my abilities of using them yet with meat in the pressure canner so I am going to be practicing here on some chicken and once I get it down to where I feel comfortable to do it on film then then I'll be doing it all right let's get our lids and bands on Fingertip tighten. Okay, the time has come to put them in Big Bertha. I have about three inches of water in there with the first rack. So let's get going. Now I could fit more on that bottom, but I'm gonna kind of evenly distribute them. Um, if you ever have something where you only have one jar for the top layer or something like that, uh, just use some, just fill some jars up with water and can those. Well, not really canning them, but you know what I mean. That way, nothing ends up falling over. All 
Okay, now let's get Bertha closed up. I always do kind of a safety check before I pressure can. Um, I'll be doing this till the last time I ever do it. But I always check the little vent hole. Just make sure it's clear that you can see light through it. So how Bertha's gonna work, I'm gonna put the lid on, twist it. Y'all probably don't need to know all this. With these all-American canners, you don't have a gasket. It makes its own seal. But you do need to make sure that it's got a pretty even gap the whole way around, which I think we're good. All right, we're gonna put some heat underneath Bertha. I'm gonna let her vent for 10 minutes. That's where you let the steam escape for 10 minutes helps build pressure and then we are going to put our little weight on there we're going to be doing 10 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes so let's get her going if you're wondering why to can deer meat uh if you're like us towards the middle of the hunting season freezer space is a uh, prime real estate uh also canning the older bucks gets rid of some of that that gamey flavor, uh, it makes it more tender. You don't have to worry so much about every single little piece of silver skin. It actually turns into a gelatin at a high enough temperature. Not sure if you can see that, but Big Bertha is starting to vent. So we're gonna let that go for 10 minutes and then we'll put the weight on. So from what I am hearing, you feel as though your life fluctuates between being empty and under pressure. One of those two things. Sad. Okay, Big Bertha has finished venting. I'm going to put this on at the 10. I got the little weight on there and I'm just going to wait for it to start jiggling and then we can adjust the temperature. Bertha's jiggling. I'm gonna crank the heat down a little bit. We want it to be going, jiggling one to four times per minute. Once you get your cooker to the 10 pounds of pressure, you wanna maintain that for the entire 90 minutes. If it drops below that, you gotta start all over again. Here we are 90 minutes later. I turned off the heat and now we're just gonna let it come down until the gauge shows zero. And so we're just gonna let it rest. All right, we got the gauge down to zero. So what I'm gonna do, take a hot pad. smell good. <laughs> I'm gonna let them cool down overnight and then tomorrow we will check the seals. Here we are the next day. They have cooled down. That looks beautiful. All right, now we're gonna open one. All right. So as you can see here, the fat has kindly moved itself up to the top. Some people, I guess, like a little bit of deer fat. I don't really care for it. It leaves a it leaves a film in my mouth and so I'm just gonna take that off. I bet you know who's gonna get that. Let's get a good look at the texture. So I'm just gonna take one of these chunks out. And as you can see it just kind of flakes right on apart. Very tender. And this was a buck too, which is usually a little bit tougher than the does. All right, we got our jar opened up. You know what that means. Let's get cooking. 
Alright, first thing first. I'm gonna put this on the stove and get it up to a boil. So don't wash the jar. Just add two tablespoons of flour to it and then about one cup of water. Y'all are finding out how lazy I am. And now we're just gonna shake this. All right, and now we're gonna wait for the, the venison in the pot to get to bubbling. I wish y'all could smell this right now. All right, now that we got this to a boil, we're gonna add our flour water right into the pot. Just cook it and stir until it's as thick and bubbly as you want. Now you can add this, pour this over potatoes, uh, rice, pasta, biscuits that's always a good one dress it up however you want but that that was pretty easy and cleanup's gonna be a snap <laughs> if you could take one bite of this I would convince you that pressure canning your deer is a good way to go. Well, that's about all I got for y'all today. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. And if you like what I'm doing, I surely would appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. So until next time, I'll see y'all later.